The Lincoln problem existed. is that you are a <laughs> ass preach. Okay. You, yes, you okay. really are. Eagle is in a spot of trouble here. He's managed to anger Nikki, Jasmine, and Ashley all at the same time. I have no idea how anyone is meant to handle that kind of rage. You see, they're all furious that Igor continues to lie to himself and everyone else about how he apparently loves Nikki. Every Nikki. time you say stuff like that, you are causing more damage to her. Stop uh, it. Hey, Nikki. She's having a panic Stop. attack right now. Let's hold on for a second. Yeah, Nikki, Nicole. are you okay? Eagle is just digging himself a bigger and bigger hole. But before we get into that, let's rewind to the beginning. I think we can all admit that the relationship Nikki and Igor share is confusing. Despite admitting that he isn't attracted to her, Igor still wants time to think things through, as if somehow there's still a possibility of them getting back together. But the question is, why is Igor still stringing Nikki along? Are you still broken up? I'll let him answer that. I think we need more time to think about all the stuff. Think about what, Igor? You broke off your engagement because you knew you didn't want this relationship. You know that you aren't attracted to Nikki. So what is there to think about at this point? Like, is Igor under the illusion that thinking about things is somehow letting Nikki down gently or something? I just don't understand what he's thinking. But it's at this point that Sean shows footage of how everything went down from Igor's perspective that day when he texted Nikki to break up with her. После этого на следующий день я почувствовал большой прилив сил, будто бы я стал свободен. He said free. Yeah, like he was in a prison with me. Look, I think that says everything we need to know. Igor felt free after he broke up with Nikki. If that isn't confirmation that you did the right thing, then I don't know what is. He feels trapped. He feels a worse version of himself with Nikki. And after seeing this, Nikki turns to Igor and she says to him, you were never in love with me. So was that true? Well, Sean asks Igor directly, what made you feel like this, Igor? Мы по 10 раз в день расставались, поэтому я хотел прекратить это состояние. Мне нужна стабильность. Oh, victim. Wow. Okay. He wants to play victim. Sorry, Nikki, but he is a victim. Like, while I know that Igor is certainly no saint, what he said doesn't warrant this reaction. We've all seen what Nikki's like, especially about sex. And everyone seems to have conveniently forgotten that Igor was only 19 when Nikki first started dating him. She was 30 and she chose to hide the fact that she's transgender. So yet he is a victim and Igor isn't about to just sit back and let Nikki dominate the conversation. Paint him to be the bad guy. Stop talking and let me speak, he says. Nikki, learn how to listen. Nikki, learn. This is why we stop. broke up. See? We stop talking stop to me like that. Yes, tomorrow I will stop. Today I will speak. Now, the problem is, a lot of the other castmates have already made up their minds about Igor. Opinion in the room is clearly on Nikki's side. Ashley, in particular, keeps springing to Nikki's defense. She demands to know whether or not Igor loves Nikki, but rather than answer her question, Igor can't help himself. He takes a swipe back at Ashley. No, 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 I see the bed wipes here. Ashley, we yes? need your candles uh, for that. Igor, I'm asking you a very direct question. No, Igor, this isn't the time to start joking around. This isn't the time to make reference to Ashley's witchcraft. This seems to be a character trait of Igor's. We've seen him do similar with Nikki in the past and it drives her insane. It's impossible to have a serious conversation with Igor without him deflecting in some way, without him trying to undermine your point with some poor jokes. But is this just a deflection tactic to cover up, to distract from how indecisive he's being? I flew out to Moldova for his birthday a couple months ago. It was so romantic. Everything was great. 
He made love to me. Yes, it's true. And he put the ring back on my finger. He broke up with her, then a few months later, invited her back to Moldova, slept with her, then wanted the engagement to be back on. Sorry, Igor, but if that's not a mind f I don't know what is. No wonder Nikki's so confused. And when Sean asks Nikki if they're technically engaged again, Nikki says yes. She shows the engagement ring on her finger. But understandably, Sean is confused by this. She asks Nikki, why on earth did you go back to Eagle? Because I love him. Drew with him. Which part of me? Oh. Excuse me? Upper part or down part? Which part of me? This is always a joke. Everyone's assuming that Igor's using this opportunity to make yet another joke. Now, perhaps I'm wrong, but I don't think Igor was joking when he said that. He wasn't smiling, that annoying smile, that smug smile that he usually makes when he thinks he's said something funny. He said it deadpan. He said it in a completely serious way. And he even tries to tell everyone it isn't a joke. So That's not down, a joke. Okay? Just listen. Calm down. Listen to her Calm down, her. Igor. Calm down. Well, you don't give her the down part, so it's obviously not that one. But even as Igor is trying to explain himself, surprise, surprise, Nikki talks over him. Look, we know that Nikki has pressured Igor to sleep with her. We know that Igor, by his own admission, isn't attracted to Nikki. So with all that in mind, is it a surprise that Igor thinks Nikki only wants him for his lower half? Now, on this topic, Sean takes the opportunity to clarify whether or not Igor has had sex with other people since being with Nikki. Do you think that after you apply for the K-1 visa process that Justin cheated on you? Yeah. I'm not cheating. Now, if you think that this is the point at which Igor defends his honor about the cheating scandal, then you'd be very wrong. Instead, he holds up his forearm and says that this is all the proof you need. This muscle right here proves that I've been masturbating a lot, is his inference. Again, it's an inappropriately timed joke. The thing is, forget Nikki, at this point, Igor has pushed Ashley too far. She can't stand this anymore. So again, she asks him directly, have you cheated on Nikki during the K-1 visa process? I asked the Nikki when K1 no, visa I'm asking process you, you starts. Are. I'm sick of this. I'm asking you directly. Were okay, you relax, with relax. other the women? You remember the candle. Hold the candle. Were Igor. It's annoying. I will give her that. It's really annoying. It's hard to defend Igor's behavior when he's acting like this. And for as much as everyone likes to hate on Ashley, I do have some respect for her for the fact that she's actually calling him his real name, Igor. So Ashley asks him again one more time, very, very clearly. And again, Igor continues to joke about her candles. It's embarrassing to watch. You talk about being a man, you talk about who has man vibes, then show up as this man that you claim that you are and answer the question that you're being asked. Spoiler alert, Igor never answers the question. And even Manuel, who hasn't said anything this entire time, can't help himself but to explode. He blurts out about Igor, nothing he says makes sense. And it's true, it's very hard to defend Igor. He's brought this all on himself by not answering the questions properly, by trying to be funny, trying to act smarter than he really is. Now, at this point, Sophie changes the subject and she asks Igor if he's even in love with Nikki. I see she acting like my enemy, not like my friend. She okay, but do you love her or no? She not respect her. Once again, we don't get a clear answer from Igor about anything. He gave her back her engagement ring, so surely the answer should be yes. Otherwise, why did he do that? Like, after all this time, after 20 years that they've known each other, is Igor really just in this for the green card? It's such a cliche, but it really is beginning to seem like he's just interested in coming to America. Like, it's the only possible solution that makes sense, isn't it? If he doesn't love her, if he's not attracted to her, why doesn't he just end it and move on? Why is he still in this? I think he's not attracted to trans women, and I don't think he's been attracted to trans women this whole time. Do you think that you're fully at ease with Nikki being trans? 
Surprisingly, Igor actually has an answer for this one, immediately. He nods his head and says yes, without hesitation. Yes, of course. Now, do you believe him? Well, the fact that he was so definitive, the fact that he didn't try to make a joke of this, definitely stands for something. Perhaps he really is being honest. But his fellow cast members just don't believe it. You don't want her! Stop with her! I'm telling you straight up directly! You just Leave want the alone. benefits that you get no, no, no. from you the relationship. A... It's kind of hard to disagree with Ashley, isn't it? I think the truth is, Igor probably loves the support he gets from Nikki more than he loves her. I mean, he doesn't like the way she dresses, he doesn't like her personality, he doesn't like the way she looks, he's not attracted to her. So instead of keeping up this pretense, maybe he should just go and look for a Moldovan girl. So once and for all, are these two actually still in a relationship or not? Yeah, are we in a relationship, yes or no? No, I don't think we are in relationship. Nikki better take off that engagement ring then. I don't think Igor knows what a relationship is. Now, Igor ends things by saying that while the door is still open for Nikki, he doesn't want to hear any more of the cast's opinions. None of you can judge, he says. You don't have the experience that I do. How many trans you have before in the relationship? Yeah, but once you knew she was trans, if you wasn't okay with it, why did you still Yeah, why did why Because I love her, he finally exclaims. Yeah, he actually says it. Because right. I love her. That's easy. It's at this point that Sean decides to bring out Nikki's mum. And finally, we get to the meat of the issue. They finally discuss the phone call between Igor and Nikki, where Igor admitted he's not trans attracted. You said that my daughter, yeah, yeah. you I'm don't person, have, yes. you're not gay and you don't have, you're not attracted to trans. Did so he what tell is you this that, about? Nikki? Come clean. I want to know why it's taken so long for them to touch upon this topic. Like, it's a pretty major issue that's not going anywhere. Now, Nikki confirms that Igor said, I'm not gay or trans attracted. I can't live with this for the rest of my life. And as tough as I imagine that might have been for her to hear, at least Igor was finally honest. It may even be the most honest thing he's ever said. Be that means me. I'm straight. I but know, you? We already know Mr. that, Chen. Igor. You are my exception. I'm your exception? <laughs> Look, Igor's being painted in a bad light here. But really, his emotions must be very complicated. You can see why, especially being on a TV show with all of this attention, for a guy that's uncomfortable even walking down the street with her, must really cause him to reflect on what he wants. But the most surprising thing of all is that Nikki reveals their K-1 visa application is still processing. So forget how confused Igor is, does Nikki even know what she wants? Do you want Justin to come to the States and get married? I don't know. I don't know. It's a simple yes or no answer. And keep in mind, Nikki doesn't have everyone shouting at her in the same way that Igor's had to put up with. But Nikki can't answer it. She can't give a straight answer. And it's left to Jasmine to spring to Nikki's defense. She calls out all the things in Igor that she doesn't like. And there's one thing in particular that Jasmine takes issue with. I feel a lot of feminine energy from her and we can be dominant as well. And not because of that, we should be perceived as men. We can also yes, take can leadership. Together. And while, of course, Jasmine is absolutely right, women can be dominant, that doesn't mean they should be seen and perceived as being male. Unfortunately, I'd argue Jasmine isn't the right person to be delivering this message. Her idea of dominance treads a very fine line between what many would see as verbal abuse. And we see the perfect example of this when Jasmine takes offence to Igor saying you and Nikki should live together and she reacts way out of proportion. She snaps at Igor. She launches into a personal attack against him. The Nikki problem is that you are a, a preach. 
Okay. You, yes. you really yes. are. Yes. Yet again, Igor jumps in with jokes. He doesn't even really try to defend himself. His attempt to undermine Jasmine is to call her a copy of Nikki. He says she's been spending too much time with Nikki. But just when you think it can't get any worse, Igor comes out with this. She don't know nothing about straight relationship and how to act like a lady in straight relationship. Can you stop saying that? How to act like a lady? That is a woman. Stop disrespecting her like that. I feel like Igor's getting confused between a straight relationship and a traditional Moldovan relationship. He wants a submissive girl who'll cook and clean for him. Someone who'll treat him like a god. But newsflash, that isn't a modern day straight relationship, especially not with an American woman. And once again, Ashley's right. Igor needs to stop undermining Nikki's gender identity because it's clearly taking a toll on her. Every time you say stuff like that, you are causing more damage to her. Stop uh, it. Hey, Nikki. She's having a panic Stop. attack right now. Let's hold on for a second. Yeah, Nikki, Nicole. are you okay? Nikki's experiencing a shortness of breath, and Igor claims he sees it all the time. And while that may sound really callous as if he doesn't care, it's worth pointing out that Nikki isn't having a panic attack. She's just crying. But with Igor now realising that no one has his back on this tell-all, Sean takes a chance to ask Nikki what exactly it will take for her to rescind her K-1 visa application. At this point, he doesn't want to come. He doesn't want to be with me. So it's like a pointless, but it'll just run up and he doesn't have to go to his interview and his life goes on. The way that Nikki words this makes it sound like she's definitely still willing to take Igor go back. She's saying he doesn't want to come, he doesn't want to be with me. It's as if all the power still lies with Igor. Now, when Igor gets asked whether or not he's going to go to the interview, he says no. In his words, he says he's not in a relationship with Nikki, so why would he? No, I want to go to the United States, but not that way. When you heard him, you should just pull it then. What's the point? Yeah. Yes, that will be a great decision. The truth is, Nikki is probably finding it so hard to withdraw the application because withdrawal is so final. Remember, this would be the second withdrawn K-1 application for these two. That's all the chances they get, they're not allowed to do a third application. So that would be it, this would be definitive. And we've seen how resistant Nikki is to that. She's still clinging on to the hope that they might get back together. Now, while she's contemplating everything, Nikki stays quiet. But after thinking things through, hearing what Igor had to say, she then suddenly snaps. You're never gonna find a woman like me that did everything for you. Of course. Ever. You'll never forget me. Ever. Remember that, That's Igor. That's true. As her mum is about to leave the stage, Nikki takes off her engagement ring and hands it to her mum. Honestly, it's pretty crazy that she was even wearing it in the first place. Surely her phone call with Igor the night before should have been enough for her to rip that thing off her finger. And as Nikki's mum leaves, she's in shock at what Igor has done to her baby. To say to her that he's in love with her and he wants to marry her and he cared about her, it was all a lie. You can really tell that Nikki's mum loves her dearly. And even though this breakup is going to be hard on her, it's clear that Nikki isn't alone. In fact, as the tell-all wraps up, Jasmine lets Nikki know just how not alone she is. And this might just be the plot twist of the century. Maybe we are trying with a grown gender. We are not meant to be with a man. On me. Now, I could make a whole separate video about just how hypocritical Jasmine is being here. For her to fly off the rails at Gino having a meaningless lap dance on his bachelor party, while here she is openly flirting with a castmate she says she finds attractive, is pretty wild. But there you go, this, this is nothing new from Jasmine, as we're all aware. So before finishing up, it's left to a producer to ask Igor how he's feeling after all that drama. 
and in classic Igor fashion, he proceeds to dig his hole just that little bit deeper. The woman in America don't give the respect for the men and don't hear what we're thinking. Igor says that if Nikki wants a healthy relationship, she can always ask him. But it really does seem like what he considers healthy is a woman who's submissive and quiet. That is just never going to be Nikki. And judging by all the hate he's getting from all the American women, I think it's safe to say that Igor should probably be searching for that closer to home. So... Now I have to write to my attorney, tell him to pull the visa. That Nikki pulling the visa is for the best. Nikki needs to let go of Igor after 20 years of insanity. From the minute we saw these two, it couldn't be any more clear that they were wrong for each other. Nikki needs to find someone who is okay with her being trans. But after two decades together, why do I feel like this isn't actually the end for these two?